Hello, this is Eddie Mendoza and welcome to another episode of Pathways of Hope. I pray that the words of Jesus today will fill you with much needed peace as you cast all your anxieties and doubts on Him who cares for you. Our passage today is the last passage from the last chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. This passage is usually called the Great Commission. And this is what Jesus said. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now this passage from Matthew is actually very similar to the last passage of the last chapter of Mark's Gospel. Okay? But in Mark's version, he adds a little detail saying that after Jesus gave these instructions to his disciples, Jesus was lifted up into the heavens. Okay. Well, that was Ascension Day. You know? And while that Ascension of Jesus is indeed a marvelous spectacle and how I wish we were all there to witness it, today we want to relish these words of Jesus because they were the last words He ever spoke in person here on earth. And I encourage each one of you to continue to reflect on these words in the coming days so that you will appreciate how much importance Jesus wanted to place in these words which he left for his disciples and for you and for me and for all mankind. Now for today, let me invite you to reflect on three aspects of Christ's Great Commission message. First, remember Jesus instructed his disciples to do what? To go and make disciples of all nations. Now. As we, read, as we read in the book of Acts, these disciples themselves, after being filled by the Holy Spirit, you know, did exactly what Jesus instructed them to do. They did. Namely, they went to many faraway places and preached the gospel and began the process of making disciples who then made disciples who made disciples and so on and so forth down through the centuries until today. So my question for you today is this. Do you remember the people who taught you about God? The people who taught you about God's love and who invited you to follow Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you remember them? And do you remember how you responded? And how your response brought you to where you are today listening to this message? Can you imagine? Think about them. Okay. Now think about this. Where might you be if those people didn't come to you when they did, where might you be if, if you hadn't heard the good news from them? No? Or that you didn't hear and respond to the invitation of Jesus to follow Him? Where would you be? Now, praise God that you're here. Because we want to praise God for those disciples who spread the good news that you and I are enjoying today, right? Praise God. And I thank God for, you know, when I think about it, for my own mother who, while I was a young boy and on to high school, she would encourage me to join her to attend Holy Mass early in the morning before going to school, every day. Okay. And I thank my high school Jesuit teachers who patiently helped me read the difficult passages of the Bible for the first time in my life. And I thank, of course, most especially my own father who himself was... Uh, accepted Jesus as his personal Savior and who wanted me to experience the same joy in knowing Jesus in a personal way. You know? And together with Daisy, my wife, they, both of them, never gave up inviting me to attend. And finally, I did attend my first prayer meeting. And I praise and thank God for those men, although I did not know them, who took charge of discipling me and prayed over me for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, if not for them, I'd probably be an arrogant and egotistic, self-made man, maybe rich in the world's goods, but sadly doomed to eternal damnation. Now, what about you? 
What about you, my dear friend? Whom do you have to thank for? Now, think about them now and say a silent prayer of thanks. No? May the Lord bless them and give them the reward of a good and faithful servant. Okay? Because of their obedience to this calling by Jesus. Now, on this point, finally, remember that now that you're a disciple, you are commanded to do likewise and make disciples of others. Sige, go ahead. No? You need to make disciples of others. My dear friend, people need the Lord just like you and I did. No? So, please do not let the gospel end with you. Now, go. Make disciples of all nations. Next. Okay. Um, Jesus describes in simple terms exactly how his disciples are supposed to make disciples. You know, simply lang. You know, Jesus says, um, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. That's it. That's what it means to be a discipler. Teach them to obey everything I commanded you. Now, for those of you who follow this post in Pathways of Hope, you might remember that last month I talked about this verse. You know, and I shared how I searched the Gospels to make a list of all the things that Jesus, demand, uh, Jesus commanded so that I would be ready to teach this and encourage those whom I am discipling to obey these commands of Jesus. Now, but what I want to leave with you on this point is an encouragement, you know, uh, is that, you know, if you are discipling someone, okay, and you are struggling with a weakness, or no, if you are being discipled, okay, and if you are struggling with a weakness and are having difficulty obeying anything that the Lord has commanded, take heart, take heart, you know. Um, our God is a God of second chances third chances and fourth chances and actually 70 times 7 chances that's how gracious God is and I hope and pray that you submit yourself that you would submit yourself to someone who will lovingly disciple you through all these struggles the key is for you to be honest with your discipler okay, and that you should take the steps that your disciple that your discipler instructs you to do to follow in order to become more and more like Christ in all your ways. Okay. You know, I've always said that discipleship is like going up the downside, the down ramp of an escalator. You know, the escalator goes up and down and you decide to go up through the down ramp. You know, it's not easy, you know, but that's what discipleship is all about. You have to work at it because otherwise if you don't, the world, the flesh and Satan will drag you further and further away from Jesus. It requires work. And that's what discipleship is all about. My point is, you cannot do this alone, my brothers and sisters. You cannot. You need a discipler. You know? And on this note, and this note, in case any of you out there watching this video does not now have a discipler, please message me or other members of the Pathways of Hope team personally, and we will try to connect you with people who will lovingly walk with you along this pathway of hope. Which brings me to my last point for today. Jesus ends his message with this. He says, Surely I am with you always. Surely I am with you always. Here, my friends, here is the word of hope. Yeah? The last promise of Jesus while here on earth. You know, first he commands us and says, Sige, go, instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. He says that. No? And then he promises us saying, And remember, I'll be with you as you do this. Day after day after day, I will be with you right up to the end of the age. I will be with you. Wow. Two things you must take away from this. First, Remember what I said about seeking out a discipler to help you in your journey to discipleship, uh, to holiness? Well, guess what? Guess what? Whoever that discipler is that is discipling you today, or whoever it was, you can be sure that Jesus is with him or was with him or her, leading you, encouraging you, and instructing you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is with them. So trust your discipler. Second, 
Should you also yourself find yourself now or in the near future, find yourself discipling someone else, whether it's your friend or your office mate or family member or even a stranger whom God will send your way, be alert. Be alert and remember that Jesus is just a prayer away. Call on His Holy Spirit to guide you and to empower you on this task. Claim His promise that He will be with you. And remember what Jesus said in John 15 verse 5. He said, He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit because, and this is important, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. That's the truth, right? That's the truth. But it's a powerful promise that you can claim. And you know what? My dear fellow discipler or would-be discipler, you probably discovered already that this effort to share the gospel and to disciple someone is not an easy task. Oh no, sometimes we struggle ourselves to understand and remember and even obey the scripture ourselves. Or we struggle to say the right things to the person we are discipling. Or maybe we are distracted by life and its anxieties and distractions. No? And definitely, and definitely, there will be the occasional pushback or the opposition or the apathy or indifference that can be discouraging to us even as we try our best to bring the good news to others. And that's why, that's why Jesus leaves us with this beautiful, beautiful promise. Because when you do claim this promise and allow Jesus to work through you, as you reach out to disciple someone with love and with courage, then you can definitely claim and confidently claim as Paul wrote in Philippians 4 verse 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yes, through Christ who gives us strength. And indeed, of all the great things, of all the great things that you can do with the strength of Christ, it is this last instruction of Jesus namely go and make disciples of all nations this is the greatest work that requires strength from jesus go and make disciples of all nations so my friend may jesus be your strength may jesus be your courage and may you experience the fruitfulness that comes from jesus who is always with us again this is eddie mendoza and god bless us 